This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. In this next chapter for companies, we're going to look at chargeable gains. Now you notice we call them chargeable gains and not capital gains, because companies do not pay capital gains tax. They pay corporation tax on their chargeable gains, on their worldwide gains if they are UK resident. Uh, not only the sale, but also the loss and destruction. Now, it's more likely you'll get a sale. You're unlikely to get loss or destruction. Um, all assets are chargeable unless they are specifically exempt. Now, a lot of the rules for chargeable gains are exactly the same as the capital gains rules for individuals. Therefore, if you have not watched the individual capital gains tax computations and I need you to do that now because I'm not going to reiterate those rules here. I'm assuming that you are doing this from chapter 1 all the way through to chapter 24, chapter 25 and that you're doing them in the logical order in which they've been prepared and recorded for your benefit. If you haven't, you must go back now and do the gains chapters otherwise some of this will not make any sense to you. So you will notice that the computation looks exactly the same. We're looking at disposal proceeds and or market value, less any incidental costs of sale, which are things like um, estate agent fees, solicitors fees, those sort of things. Allowable costs, that's the cost of your purchase and or any permanent extensions, any permanent improvements. The only time, it, that's where it comes to for individuals. The only time it alters is here. We have a new um, uh, rule to be able to uh, work out the gain for a limited company. And it's called indexation allowance. Now, indexation allowance uses the retail prices index as a means of combating inflation and what it does is you apply this factor to the original cost which may be several years ago bringing that cost up to date with inflation so that you're almost comparing like with like now it did end in december 2017 so be careful if they give you any details afterwards it looks very much like they've stopped doing that and for every all the indexation details will end on December 17 but please be aware that they may not do that you may get something way up till 2024 or 2023 when an asset was sold so just be aware of that um, you need to calculate indexation allowance for every asset using the factor which is given to you against the capital expenditure Okay, you apply it to the acquisition cost and any permanent enhancement extensions, those um, diff, um, um, uh, improvements, but not revenue improvements, capital improvements. Okay, now normally those are on a different date. So dates, very, very important that you read the question carefully when you look at the dates. Um, it cannot create or increase a loss. So if your proceeds minus cost equals a loss, you will not get indexation allowance. If your proceeds minus cost equals a gain and your indexation allowance is more than the gain, you only get that restricted. We're going to have a look at some examples of how that works. Okay. So example number one, let's look at a, a simple example that we have here. A company bought an asset on the 6th of June, 1987, cost of £20,000. Enhancement expenditure of 6000 occurred in August, 1991. The asset was sold in October, 2023 for £100,000 and we have initial costs of sale of £1,000. Okay. So, pro forma, proceeds, less cost equals gain. Proceeds, 100,000. 
less costs of sale. Tick them off as you're doing them. Costs of sale brings us down to net proceeds of 99,000. We have here costs and acquisition, um, uh, expenditure, cost of 20,000 and enhancement of six, which brings us down to 73. Right, now workings, indexation allowance, and there'll be two. Firstly, we're going to do the indexation allowance for the cost. So the cost is £20,000. And we will multiply that by the factor that relates to the date of acquisition. So that is multiplied by that. So I want you to stop now and just have a look at how you would work that figure out. 20,000 times 1.706. Okay, so what did you get for that? You should have got... 34,120. In other words, that 20,000 after inflation of 17.6%, 0.6% has been taken into account. Sorry, 170.6% has been taken into account. That 20,000 is now an extra £34,120. So if it, they bought it at today's, it would have been worth 54120 is what we're saying. Now, the date of the enhancement expenditure was this. So the factor is multiplied by the, the um, enhancement costs. So 1.067 times 6,000. If you could do that now. And I'll wait. Okay, you should have 6,402 which gives you an indexed gain of 32,478. Now, there is no annual exempt amount for companies. If you are doing a capital gains tax computation in a section B or a section C, please get it fixed in your head. Am I doing this for an individual? In which case I'm going to get the annual exempt amount but I don't get indexation or am I doing it for a company and I get indexation allowance but I don't get the annual exempt amount very very important that you do that okay so let's move on to gains and losses <clears throat> capital gains are chargeable to corporation tax losses only arise when the proceeds are less than the cost okay and remember indexation cannot be used to create or increase that loss. If they are gains and losses arise in the same accounting period, net them off just like you would do for individuals. If it's a gain, charge it to tax. If it's a loss, carry it forward against gains only. And you'll have seen that if you've watched the previous lectures on uh, corporation tax. They can only, they stick together. They can only be relieved against each other. So that's all the kind of basics. Now, shares. We dealt with shares for individuals. Um, the rules are very similar, but obviously now we have to account for indexation allowance. And the matching rules are slightly different. <clears throat> the matching rules for individuals... Are same day, next 30 days, and the pool. If you're dealing with a limited company, it is the same day, the previous nine, and the share pool, okay, and indexation allowance. So slightly different. And if you remember rightly, the share pool records the number of shares. 
the cost of each acquisition and disposal, same as individuals, but you've obviously got this indexation allowance you have to deal with. Okay, now don't forget these factors are given to you in the question and they ceased to be carried on after December 2017. So what we're going to have to do is have a look at example number two. So A Limited bought the following shares in B Limited. 20th of August 1990, they bought a 1,000 shares at a cost of £5,000. In November 97, they bought 2,000 more shares. And in December 2023, another 500 shares at a cost of £5,000. Calculate the gain arising because in 10th of December, they sold 3,000 of these shares for £36,000. So that's our proceeds. And if you remember rightly, this is all about finding the cost because we have several costs. We have 5,000, we have 12,000, we have 5,000, we've got indexation. How do we know what the cost of those 3,000 shares? And that's what this matching rule um, needs to do. So matching rules were one, same day as the sale. Were there any shares bought on the same day? The answer is no. So we're not going to do that computation. Two, previous nine days. Did we buy any shares in the previous nine days? Yes, we did. We bought 500 of those shares. So 500 of our shares will be matched by this cost. And then the rest of the shares will come out of the pool. So the, the other 2,500 shares giving us a total of all 3,000, they will come out of the pool, which we will then need to set up. Okay, so let's do that then. So the proceeds, obviously you're going to need a heading. So the proceeds were 36,000. Yep, but we're going to have to do two computations. One for the previous nine days, and one for the pool of shares. So the proceeds, if you remember rightly, these were 500 out of the 3,000 times 36,000. Oops. So the proceeds there are 6,000 pounds with the balance of the proceeds going over here. Show the workings. Show how you have apportioned that 36,000 between these two computations, please. Less cost equals gain. less cost. Now this will have indexation in it. Equals gain. So now we need to do lots and lots of different bits of working. However, these 500 shares, if we go back to the question, we bought 500 shares and we have a cost of £5,000. So that £5,000 can go straight into our computation because we have matched those shares completely. <clears throat> so the main working that we're going to have to do is working number one, which is going to be our pool. Okay, so this will have any date, <clears throat> what occurred the number of shares, the cost, and an extra one, indexed cost. So those are our columns we're going to set this up. Okay, so starting with the beginning of the question, so we're going to do the August 1990 and then the November 97. So in August 1990, 
we bought a thousand shares and they cost us five thousand pounds let's go back just check that's correct there you go thousand shares at five thousand pounds now we're not going to add in the next lot of shares until we've done something we now need to index this pool of shares up to the next um, uh, occurrence which is the next purchase the next it's called an operative event so we need to index from 1990 up to November 97 because in November 97 we bought some more okay go back to the question between October so August 1990 and November 97 that's the one we want they give us more information than we need there 0 0.329 0 0.329 is multiplied by the £5,000 and the answer to that is £1,645. Nothing goes in there because we didn't buy anything and there is no cost. We are just doing a maths to bring that cost up to today's value in 1997 when we bought another 2,000 shares for £12,000. So we now have 3,000 shares which cost us £17,000 and their indexed value is now £18,645. Okay, with me so far. Now, the next operative event that needs to go into this pool of shares is the sale in December 23. What happened to indexation? It ceased in December 2017. However, we still need to index up. So we will then index up to December 17 from November 97 so that's one lot of indexation and this is the second lot of indexation so those two the question says that between november 97 and december 17 0 0.820 0 0.820 now that is multiplied by 18645 in the indexed cost column nothing goes in there nothing goes in there so 18,645 times 0 0.820 is 15,289 so our pool of 3,000 shares cost us 17,000 but its value is now 33,934 and we now need to deduct from there in December 23 we have a sale and we need to take out of here if you remember rightly 2,500 shares leaving us with 500 shares carried forward and we do this on an average cost so to work out the cost relating to those so the cost would be 2,500 divided by 3,000 times 17,000, which is 14,167, leaving us a cost carried forward 2833. Now that figure is the cost figure that needs to go into our calculation. 14,167, 14. 167. Now I've separated the two out, leaving us 15833, because indexation cannot increase or create a loss. 
So we need to separate it out here at this point. We need to then repeat for indexation like the index cost 2,500 divided by 3,000 multiplied by 33,934. Okay, 33,934, which is 28,278. It was an indexed cost carry forward of that. Now, this figure of 28278 includes what? It includes the cost, doesn't it? Because it's the indexed cost column. Therefore, wrong figure. <clears throat> Let me just rub that out. I've taken the wrong figure. This is quite common in these. They are a nasty little thing. One, four, that's it. One, four, one, six, seven that we've removed, that's it, the cost that we've removed, giving us indexation only. So this is indexation plus cost. This is the cost, which means that this is the indexation only of 14111, which needs to go in here. Now, in this situation here, the gain of 1722, that needs to be added up with that one, okay, for the final answer. But what I wanted to point out, the total is 28,000, what was it? 28,278. You can clearly see that 28,278 is less than 30,000. Not a problem. And you could just slot, slot it in and come up with 1722. You're not going to get any bonus marks for that because the examiner is expecting it to be split. That's what the model answer will look like because the examiner wants you to show him that you know that indexation cannot create a loss.